Hi third graders, hi friends, hope everyone's doing great. I wanted to come on so we could continue our class read aloud, The War with Grandpa by Robert Smith. And the last chapter that we finished, uh, Peter and his grandpa actually went on a really fun fishing trip. And um, Peter was a little timid and nervous at the beginning, but he ended up having a really great time. It was his first time going. And the chapter ended with um, Peter uh, feeling just a little sad later because he still snuck in to his grandpa's room to steal his wristwatch. Oh my goodness. So chapter 28 is playing hardball. Here we go. It did not take grandpa too long to discover that his watch was missing. And I guess he didn't have to walk around trying to figure out where it had gone. He came upstairs the next morning. It was a Sunday and I was waiting around for mom and dad to wake up so I could go downstairs for breakfast. I heard grandpa coming and I grabbed a book so I could pretend like I was reading. Grandpa knocked on my door ever so lightly and then pushed it open a crack to look in. Awake, I see. He came in and sat down in my rocking chair. He was wearing his pajamas, his robe, and his slippers. A funny thing happened this morning, he said. I went to slip on my watch, and guess what? It seemed to be missing from my dresser. Hmm. Oh, is that so? I said in a casual way. That's a fact. Well, I said, maybe there was a thief that came into the house last night and stole it. Mm, I don't think so, Grandpa said, seeing as how my wallet was on the dresser too, right next to the watch, and it wasn't even touched, and I even had a few dollars in it. Well, maybe he was a dumb thief, I said, or maybe a thief who just needed a watch. Grandpa looked at me and grinned. I didn't blame him. What, I did kind of sound stupid to myself even. Well, how come you didn't leave a note? Grandpa said. Oh, well, I think we're all past that stage now, aren't we? Hmm, maybe so. I took your watch, I said. We both know that. Grandpa kind of shook his head a little. I was kind of thinking maybe our war was over, he said, especially after yesterday. I had a good time fishing with you, Pete. You're a really good company. Well, I said, it wasn't your it wasn't your average kind of day for me either. You know, I did have the one of the best days of my life with you, but I said, and sort of shrugged. It doesn't change things, Grandpa. Hmm, so I see. There's something I want, and you have, and I don't know what else to do except to keep fighting for what is mine, I said. Too bad, Grandpa said. But look, Petey, I have a special reason for wanting my watch back. You see, it was a gift from Grandma on our 40th wedding anniversary, and I treasure it. Well, now I felt like I made the most miserable, low-down person in the whole wide world mistake. But I wasn't about to give up. It's in a safe place, Grandpa, I said, and I'll take really good care of it. I didn't have to take care of it at all because it was actually wrapped up really nice and snug in a pair of my white socks hidden with a baseball that at the bottom of my camp trunk. You know I could probably find it if I looked, Grandpa said. Mm, I don't think so, I said. I'm pretty good at looking, Grandpa said. When you're in school, Pete, I've got all day to turn this place upside down. You could look a million years and never find it, I said back. Grandpa sighed and rocked a few times in the chair. I'd rather you just hand it over back to me by yourself, he said. No way, I said. Not until you give me my room back. I've heard that before, he said. How about if I say please? Look, Grandpa, I said. All you have to do is tell my mom and dad that you want to switch rooms with me. It's that easy, isn't it? Grandpa took a lo long look in my eyes, rocking so gently in the chair. You're really like a broken record, you know that? He said. I only want what is rightly mine, I said. So, Grandpa said, now we're playing hardball, huh? I'm not playing, I said. No room, no watch. Fair enough, Grandpa said. 
He got up and slowly walked to the door. But from now on, he said, you better watch out. Uh oh. Chapter 29, Waiting for the Other Shoe to Drop. Did you ever know something terrible was going to happen, but you didn't know when? That's the way I felt the whole time when Grandpa was waiting before striking back at me. It was real smart of him. Diabotically, if you want to know the truth, I walked around going crazy for a whole week. I mean, it's hard to be calm when someone is going to do something to you and you don't know what it is or when it is going to happen. I lay awake at night, sleeping a few few nights, wondering, is this the blow? Is this when it's going to come down? It kind of reminded me about an old Greek guy that I heard this story where he went to a party where they hung a sword over his head by his hair and it had to be either a very skinny sword or a very fat piece of hair but either way it couldn't have been too comfortable to be waiting for the sword to come down and slice you into a human chicken part. I felt like I was in the dentist office waiting my turn wondering how much it was going to hurt. It's the same feeling I get in school just before a test when everything I study just jumps out of my head. You could ask me my own name just before a test and I might not even know it. And Grandpa was teasing me, which didn't help a bit. You look nervous, he'd say. I am for goodness sakes, I'd say. I wish you'd just do something to me already. Ooh, patience, he said with a funny smile and it kind of gave me a chill psychological warfare, right? I mean, he was messing with my mind. And the more he waited, the more messed up I got. I left one of my school books home one day. I just plain forgot it. I knew why, because I was too busy worrying over what kind of trick he was going to pull on me. Grandpa told me a joke one afternoon. It was about a guy who lived below a man who took off only one shoe when he had gotten bed at night. The man below couldn't hardly sleep, sleep waiting for the other shoe to drop. I didn't think it was very funny. That brings us to chapter 30, and it's titled Jenny the Spy. Right around then, while I was waiting for the other shoe to drop, a peculiar thing happened. It was a rainy Sunday. Mom was in the kitchen baking something with cinnamon in it that made the whole house smell terrific. Jenny was helping, and after a while, Jenny must have helped too much because Mom sent her out of the kitchen. Grandpa was sitting in the living room with me, and Dad was upstairs taking a nap. Next thing Grandpa and I knew, Jenny came walking into the room with my Monopoly game. My empty Monopoly game with all the pieces and the cards hidden by Grandpa. Let's play, Jenny said. She set the game down on the coffee table. Ahem, <clears throat> Grandpa said, kind of with a cough. <clears throat> Where'd you get that? I said. I acted like I was going to be mad. From your toy cabinet, Jenny said, where you always keep the games. She began to open the box, but I stopped her by putting my hand on top of the lid. Don't you ask permission before you go into my room and steal a game of mine? I said really loud. Jenny looked at me in a funny way. What do you mean steal it? She said, here it is. I think we should play Monopoly, you, me, and Grandpa. Well, that's just a stupid idea, I said. Jenny blinked her eyes at me. What's the matter with you, Peter? She asked. You're acting real funny. I don't want to play Monopoly, okay? I said. I have my right, you know, and if a person doesn't want to play Monopoly, a person can't be forced against his own will, so I'm just going to go put the game away. I didn't expect Jenny to jerk the box away from me, but she did, and then she opened it. I'll play with Grandpa then, and you're just going to be a meanie pants, she said. I looked at Grandpa, and he looked at me, and we both knew what was coming next. Hey, where's all the pieces and the cards and stuff? Jenny asked. There's just a Monopoly board and nothing else in the box. There was a very long and very embarrassing silence. Silence. Jenny stared at me and at Grandpa. I couldn't think of what to say. Grandpa began to whistle, hoo, hoo, hoo. and then Jenny found the note. I stupidly left it back in the box. Two can play at this game, she read out loud, but you can't play this game now. Sign the old man? She looked mystified. Who's the old man? She asked. And why are the pieces missing? 
Well, I said, there's a perfectly simple explanation. Jenny waited. I waited too, because I couldn't think of the perfectly simple explanation. Something fishy's going on over here, Jenny said. Grandpa cleared his throat. <clears throat> you both know about this and I don't, Jenny said. Are you the old man who wrote this note, Grandpa? Are you playing a trick on Peter? Me? Grandpa said. Me? Don't be silly. Why would I ever play a trick on Peter? Jenny thought about that for no more than a second. It is you, Grandpa. That's why you look so guilty. I wish you'd just tell me. You know I can keep a good secret. Stuff and nonsense, Grandpa said in a huffy way, like he was being insulted. One of Pete's friends did this, I bet. Isn't that right, Pete? Who? Uh, yeah, yeah, right, he said. That's right. Steve did it. Uh, you know, he's a lot older than me, and sometimes he, he calls himself the old man. Steve isn't a lot older than you, Jenny said. She would make a great detective. I was thinking that. Sure he is, I said, months and months. So then where did Steve hide all of the Monopoly pieces, Jenny asked. And why don't you just go get them, Peter, so we can play already, okay? Well, I said, you go upstairs and go get them, Pete, said Grandpa. He stood up from the couch. And I'll just step up to my room and then get me a sweater. It is kind of chilly down here. Now I understood what was happening. So I ran up to my room like I was getting the Monopoly stuff while Grandpa retrieved it from wherever he had hid it. I met him outside my old room. A narrow escape there, he said, and he handed me a plastic bag with all the Monopoly stuff in it. And I handed him back his watch. Thanks, he said, and he slipped the watch back on his wrist. That doesn't mean I'm not giving up, I told him. Oh, of course not, Grandpa said. And I still owe you one, I believe. I'm going to drop the other shoe on you any day now. Then we went back downstairs and played Monopoly with Jenny until dinner time. And that brings us into our next chapter, which is 31, The Shoe Drops, Kerplunk. And we'll share that again next time when we come on together. I hope you're having a wonderful day, and I will see you soon. Bye, third graders.